Hey, if you'd love to read, aspire to one day be an entrepreneur and are a personal development junkie just like me, then you're gonna wanna stick around. Today, I'm sharing five books that every aspiring entrepreneur should add to their reading list. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what books to add to your Goodreads list and exactly why you're gonna want to. I am a voracious reader, and this all started from when I was a child. So my mom always had this rule that when I was a kid, I always had to go to bed at whatever time it was that they set for me, but I was allowed to stay up as late as I wanted so long as I was reading. So that created an incredible habit that I've now carried on into my adult life which is pretty amazing. And it's something I even try to do now with my own kids. Now as an adult, depending on what kind of mood I'm in, I could blow through a book, no joke, in 48 hours. I've been known to go to as little as 24 hours for an entire personal development book. It's nuts. And that's kind of amazing considering that I'm a mom of four kids now and one of them is an infant. So the fact that I can even still read at that level gives you an idea of how much I enjoy it and how much I absorb while I'm reading. Today I wanted to share my top picks for aspiring entrepreneurs. I'm a fourth generation entrepreneur myself and these are all books that I wish I had come across much much earlier on into my journey because ultimately what I learned in them would have helped me figure out things a lot sooner than having to learn it through you know my own 15 plus years experience working in my family's business and absorbing it from my family. I'm sharing them with you today so that you can learn what you need to know to build your business on the most solid foundation possible. That way you have everything you need to know when you go ahead and get started. So the first book is called Start With Why. And this one actually came on my radar way back when, when I was a senior vice president. So as I mentioned before, I am actually a third generation, um, actually fourth generation entrepreneur, but I was the third generation to be running my family's business. And I did so for over 15 years. And this book I found when I was a senior vice president, you know, so while I was at that level, the concept that's shared in the book is one that really needs to be at the very foundation of your business, right? It is the core. If people don't know why you are in business, then you give them absolutely no incentive to care about why your business exists to begin with, right? So that's really what the book is all about. So it's based on one of the most famous TED Talks ever given. It was called a Start With Why by Simon Sinek, who's the author of the book. I'll actually make sure I drop the link in the description if you want to check that TED Talk out. If people don't know why your business exists, it's going to make it really difficult for them to actually care about it as much as you do. In my program, the Validate Your Biz Blueprint, we actually kick off the process with what's taught in this book. Uh, it's not the only thing, of course, but it definitely helps folks build a super solid foundation on making very, very important decisions regarding their business as they're building it from the very, very beginning. Be able to create something that they know that their, their audience, their clients, their customers are going to care about from when they start it, right? So it's so, so powerful and definitely a book that you must check out, especially if you're just starting out. My second pick is a book called The One Thing. In this book by Gary Keller, he makes the case that the difference between really focusing on one thing and having that be what you're known for is really the difference between having success and not being successful. One quote that um, was written in the book, which I absolutely loved, is extraordinary focus on one thing each day is what leads to extraordinary success. And this is so, so true. The reason why this is important is because if you aren't able to articulate and clarify what the one thing is that your business does really, really well and what should be known for, it's going to be incredibly difficult to stand out in a crowded market, right? So this is the, the one thing, pardon the pun, that makes you stand out from the competition and makes people ultimately care about why they should go with you versus everybody else. It also makes the case too on why focusing on one specific product or one specific service will really help you stand out as being the leader in that marketplace because you are so highly specialized. My third pick is a bit different than the first two I mentioned, and it's one called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, who you 
may or may not have heard of, Elizabeth was the author of Eat, Pray, Love. So definitely not something you would consider to be a business book, but still very important. I'm going to share with you why. Big Magic is at its core a book on how to increase your creativity, right? And how to really nurture it and develop it. Ultimately, creativity is an incredibly important entrepreneurial skill. I think that way too many people kind of dismiss creativity. I think of, you know, when you think of business, you think of, you know, getting an MBA and financials and all this, you know, technical strategic stuff where it's really the ability to be able to innovate and think outside the box that really makes entrepreneurs stand out, right? So creativity is so, so important. And this book really captures in a very succinct way how to, to nurture your creativity, develop it. And especially if you're looking to get into a creative field in your business, whether it be, you know, for example, being an author like Elizabeth is, or maybe you want to start a marketing agency or a photography business or anything that's in the realm of, you know, a creative professional, this book is definitely a must read for you. One of my favorite takeaways for the book is how Elizabeth kind of ties spiritual concepts to creativity. So the one thing that really stood out to me, and I'm paraphrasing here because I don't remember exactly how it was worded in the book, but the concept was that when you have an idea and you feel inspired and really, really excited about whatever that idea was, that it's almost kind of like the sign from the universe that you're meant to kind of take action on it and bring it to being, right? That there's a reason that that seed was planted in your mind and that it's up to you to take action. And ultimately what ends up happening is if you allow yourself to be guided by fear and you don't take action, that when you go long enough with that, that the idea will ultimately land in somebody else's head and that that person will have the you know, inspire motivation to go ahead and take action on it. And they ultimately see success with whatever that is. That's why it's so common for people to see a big successful business idea, for example, and to think on it forever and ever and ever, and then get really pissed off when somebody else does exactly what it was that they had come up with. And I love the way that she had kind of, you know, kind of positioned this concept because it made so much sense to me when I had read it, because for my entire life, I've been coming up with different business ideas. And there have been ones in particular, Spotify. I had that idea like back during Napster. <laughs> when Spotify had come out, I was like, oh, you know, somebody should do this MP3 thing and, you know, have ads and do this and do that. And I never, ever took action on it. So when I read this specific segment in the Big Magic book, I was like, oh my God, that makes sense. So the idea skipped me and because I didn't take action on it, so it went to somebody else and it ultimately ended up creating it. So I thought that was really cool. And it, the book is full of beautiful uh, spiritual concepts. Another thing that Elizabeth uh, shares in this book, which I love is very tangible strategies and tactics on how to navigate that really awkward phase between when you're starting your business and when you're still working your day job. One concept that she has is something called a bridge job, which is something that one of my mentors had recommended. I do at the very beginning and I now recommend to my clients as well. And a bridge job quite simply is having some kind of a gig economy job instead of a standard regular day job to supplement your income while you're working on the big dream or big goal. So for example, for me, when I had, you know, left my family's business was in the process of building my own, I didn't have quite enough revenue in my business, though I generated it really, really fast to be able to take care of, you know, all of my expenses because I was going from a six figure salary to all of a sudden starting from ground zero and building my own. So the way that I was able to supplement the difference was by taking on gig economy jobs, whether it be I did copywriting, I did web design, I did other things that were in my skill set, but on more of like a freelance basis. So you could drive for Uber, you could do DoorDash, uh, any number of things, babysitting, dog walking. Um, and I believe in the book, Elizabeth described that she waited tables, you know, as an example of a bridge job. And it's something that you enjoy doing, that you have flexibility to pick up ships here and there, wherever, and still be able to generate income and take pressure off of your business having to perform right away. And that I found to be tremendously valuable, and I know that you will too. So definitely be sure to add Big Magic to your list to check out. So I've got two more books that I want to share with you, but first, I want to know, What's your favorite book on entrepreneurship? Go ahead, drop me a comment below. Let me know. I'm always adding new books to my list as well. And I'd love to, to see what you guys have that I should add to my Goodreads list. 
All right, so my fourth pick is The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. In The E-Myth, Gerber makes the case that the number one downfall of the vast majority of small businesses out there is the unwillingness of the owner to give up certain responsibilities to other people to help them do it. In short, it means that a lot of small business owners willingly wear all the hats in their business and they don't outsource and they don't bring on team members and they don't scale. And as a result, they stay stuck, small, as well as completely overworked indefinitely. And it's one of the reasons that a lot of small business owners burn out quickly and they don't have longevity out in the marketplace. So in my experience, it's much, much easier, especially when you're just starting out with a clean slate and starting a brand new business and imagining the end result and what you want the business ultimately to be and to backwards engineer it. And one of the things that the E-Myth does really, really well is it helps you picture, especially if you have absolutely no business experience to begin with at the beginning, what needs to happen and what you need to be envisioning in the future to be able to backwards engineer that. Gerber in the book shares a ton of really useful strategies and resources to help you visualize what your business ultimately is going to be. So let's say in your five-year vision, what you want to grow your business into. And then from there, figure out what team you're going to need to be able to support that vision and then be able to work towards eventually hiring that team. So it's one of the things that I've loved about the book is it's not about having to hire the team right away. It's about knowing strategically, okay, well, this is what I have to take care of right now. But once it gets to this certain point, it will be time to hire this person to then take that off my plate so that then the company can achieve this, right? So it's, it's very, very easy to digest, easy to understand, and it makes basically creating a future vision, vision for your business much, much easier. Highly, highly recommend it. Last but not least, my fifth pick is called Essentialism by Greg McKeon. I am a huge minimalist. So essentialism really kind of ties into that minimalist, um, you know, value in your work and your productivity. Ultimately, I found this book during a time phase where I, when I felt very overwhelmed with my business. I knew that I was gonna be having a baby soon, I was doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one work, and that I wasn't going to have the capacity to be able to continue running my business the way that I was doing it. So when I found Essentialism, it was really to try to figure out how to do less, but obviously better. So I really, really wish I had found this book much, much earlier on in my journey, because like every other entrepreneur out there, especially aspiring ones, we all tend to do way too much stuff way too soon. So as an example, a lot of folks, me included, you start off by saying, I want to be a coach and I want to do a podcast and I want to have a website and I want to uh, do professional speaking and you want to do all the things at once really a solid business plan, especially when you're just starting. You're like I mentioned earlier with the one thing book by Gary Keller, you focus on one thing to start, you make that profitable and then you add other things. So the one thing that the book Essentialism really, really helps you do is figure out what's essential in your business right now. In general, I'm just going to break it down for you right now. Anything that's essential is stuff that generates revenue. <laughs> for your business. So if a website has never generated a lead for you, you don't have to worry about the website just yet. Do whatever it was that got you the lead. Being able to kind of prioritize what it is you're working on in that manner is so, so helpful. So as a brand new entrepreneur, learning what tasks in your business are actually essential. So those revenue generating tasks is going to make it so much easier for you to be able to build your business and bring in revenue much faster and at scale compared to if you were spreading yourself thin over a variety of different products or services or different projects. So it's really going to help you focus on the tasks that are truly going to move the needle for you. So what I love about this book is it provides the framework that you need to be able to determine exactly what it is that's essential and to then take action on only those essential things and make sure you keep yourself accountable to it. Well, it's also gonna help you create the plan as well as to develop the habits to help you support that as well, which I think is crucial. So that's my five picks for books that every aspiring entrepreneur should read. So to kind of recap quickly, the first one was Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Then we have The One Thing by Gary Keller. Third was Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert.
Fourth is The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. And fifth is Essentialism by Gary McKeon. When you add all of these to your reading list, here is what you will be able to accomplish after reading them. You'll be able to determine why your business exists and why people should care. You'll know what's the one thing that sets your business apart. You'll know how to nurture your creativity as well as how to support yourself as you work toward your dreams. You'll know how to create a future corporate vision and how to take action on only those visionary tasks that will allow you to bring this vision to light and allow you to actually step away from your business, which is the whole point of having a business to start with, right? You don't necessarily want to be working in the business all the time. And last but not least, you'll know how to do less while building your business, but better. If the reason you came across this video is because you've been searching for tools and resources on how to start your very own business, then my program, the Validate Your Biz Blueprint, is the perfect solution for you. In it, you'll receive the A to Z blueprint on everything that you need to know to get your business started, ranging from figuring out exactly what to offer all the way through landing your very first paying client without using websites, content, or paid ads. To get started, go ahead and click the link below in the description to book a call with me and my team and discuss whether or not the program is a good fit for you, your business idea, and your goals. Even more personal and professional development tips that you can use to start your very first business, go ahead and check out these videos here. And if you like this video and found value in it, be sure to comment below, let me know, like this video, and share it with your friends. I'll see you next time.